Okay, <clears throat> I want to talk about two different ways to present a sequence. Um, one's called the quote closed form formula, and another is uh, called recursive definition. And I'll show you both. Let me start illustrating this with an example. So consider, let's try this. Here's an example that's straightforward enough. Um, here's a sequence four, nine, 14, 19, 24, 29. You probably guess the next ones. Okay, so this is a sequence. Um, I'm gonna start putting set notation around my sequences just just to, it's a collection of numbers, so sometimes people like to call that a, a set. Uh, not a huge deal, but, um, and the question is, well, what, how do I describe, like, you know, if, um, if here, if this was, if we start counting from n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, and so on, and so this is a sub n. So the sequence is a sub n from n equals one to infinity. Um, the question I have for you is what, for example, is uh, the hundredth term of the sequence? What is a sub 100? How do you how do you list the hundredth? How do you can you can you tell me the hundredth term? There's a pattern. You can definitely see a pattern, right? So how do you identify the hundredth term? Um, well, there's a and this this sort of shows you. You could try to come up with a formula. I mean, that's the idea. Is like if you can come up with a formula for the for a sub n as a function of n, uh, then we could answer the question immediately, right? If we had a formula for a sub n in terms of n, the answer is immediate. We just plug in n equals 100. Plug in n equals 100 to the formula. So, and you know, if simple examples we've looked at, for example, um, just as a side example, you know, when we had the squares, one, four, nine, maybe those both look like nines, one, four, nine, 16, and so on, then, you know, we know a sub n is n squared. So a sub 100 is 100 squared, which happens to be 10,000. Okay, so that's an easy way. So that's again, if you have a formula like we do here, we have a formula for the nth term, it's just n squared, then you can immediately answer the question. But maybe the formula is not obvious here. I mean, you could probably pause the video and figure it out, but um, I just wanna mention it's not, it's not obvious. Um, but, by, but by the way, such a formula, if we have a formula like this, that's um, a formula for a sub n in terms of n, that's what's called a closed form formula. So, um, meaning all you gotta do is plug it in. You don't have to do any sort of prediction. You don't have to sort of like calculate all the previous terms of the sequence, for example. Um, and so, you know, this, this example down here, this is a closed form formula for the squares. It's an obvious one, but it's uh, worth mentioning. So um, that's called a closed form formula. Uh, but let me talk about a different way, which just look at the sequence before we find the closed form formula, which is there's something that probably jumps out at you in the pattern, right? It ends four, nine, four, nine, four, nine, four, nine. And for, so you probably see that what we're doing each time is we're adding five. If I go back to the top here, Ooh, let's zoom in, why not? If I go back to the top here, I add five to get from each term to the next, right? Wish my fives looked like fives. <laughs> plus five, plus five, right? So, um, and that's worth noticing, that's part of the pattern, right? It can, persists. 
nevertheless, it persists. Um, and it keeps happening. So we just keep adding five each time. All right. So, um, and by the way, such a pattern, there's a name for this. It's called an arithmetic progression. When you just add the same number over and over again. You might've heard that term before. If you've ever looked at lists of numbers, sort of a simple list. Um, and again, you could probably figure out the close before formula, but I just want to mention that this is, if you think about it, one way we could write down all that plus five, plus five nonsense is we could say, well, you know, A2 is A1 plus five, and A3 is A2 plus five, right? Um, right, because up here, this is a two, it's nine. This was the n equals two, and then we add five to get a three. Okay, so, and you can keep doing this. A four is a three plus five. A five is a four plus five, and et cetera. And this gets boring very quickly, so instead you just say, well, okay, I can get each, each term, and I can get each element of the sequence, each term in the sequence, in terms of the one from the one before, I can get it from one before, right? I can just say it's at, it's plus five. So sort of we would say that in general, if we want to go from the nth to the n plus first term, so the n plus first term is just the nth term plus five, right? And this is called recursive because you're basically defining, if you think about it, if you've ever seen the word recursive used, it's really defining Defining stuff sort of in terms of itself or in terms of previous things. This is sort of described in terms of itself. We're just, just describing the sequence in terms of itself in the sense that we're describing each term in, uh, by the previous term. We're giving it some, we're doing something to the previous term. Um, yeah, so this is called a recursive definition, although this isn't quite complete because we really need to specify that what's the first term because otherwise we don't know where to start so if i if i put this whole thing here if i start a sub n equals uh a sub n plus five and then also that a sub one equals four then we can plug in and get a sub two right we just plug in the formula a sub two is four plus five which is nine so right eg um a sub you know, two is a sub one plus five, which is four plus five. Wow, I really can't write, which is nine. And it's, and then you can get a sub three. So you can actually get, you can sort of regenerate the sequence from this information, right? And this is called a recursive definition. And so lots of sequences can be de defined recursively. Sometimes it's easier to define them recursively. But it's sort of better to find um, a closed form formula is going to be my claim because I don't think this helps us that much. Um, I mean, maybe, you know, it could, you could start to help you find the pattern and try to figure out what the hundredth term is. Like, um, helps a little but maybe not totally in finding the hundredth term. Maybe not totally to find a sub 100, the hundredth term. But of course, you know, I mean, it does help, right? Because you know that you're adding five each time. And so, I mean, you start with four and you add 500 times. Although, well, are you adding 500 times or 99 times? That's where it's kind of unclear, but it's somewhere around 500. But is it 499? Is it 504? It's not super obvious yet. Um, so let's try to find the closed form formula. Because then again, that'll solve the problem immediately. And so let's make that table of, you know, let's put our numbers. Um, 
in the bottom part, so 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, 29, 34, etc. And let's label these in, you know, again, we always increment by one. So this is just one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, it maybe it's better to start with n equals zero. I don't know, but, um, but you know, we can just try n equals one and then we can always change things around if we think that we can find a nicer formula with n equals zero. But, well, what's the formula? I mean, there's something with fives. And so it might be worth writing down under here the multiples of five, because like, you know, if you just think about multiplying one times five, you get five. Two times five, you get 10. Three times five, you get 15. Four times five, you get 20. Five times five, you get 25, so on. And you can probably really see the pattern now right that basically you're just multiplying by five and subtracting one and so that immediately you know right we subtract one to get from five to four ten to nine fifteen to fourteen etc and so that tells us pretty much immediately that a sub n is five n minus one that's their function and so this is the closed form formula. For the sequence that we started with. So I'll give you a bunch more, um, you know, you should, you should look in the textbook, you should look wherever for more examples of recursive and closed form formulas, but it's just sort of a, a nice illustration of the two ideas. So um, I'll post some more videos that have more, some more examples, uh, but I just wanted to give you the idea in one nice example. So, okay, I'll stop. Oh wait, I was so quick to, quick to keep the video short and stop it that I forgot to answer the question, which is what's a sub 100? So, a sub 100, the 100th term of the, se of the sequence is 5 times 100 minus 1, which is 499. That's the 100th term. Counting, it's a little, I guess you're adding 599 times going from the first term to the 100th term. So that's why it's, you might have guessed that the answer was 504. But you're only, and you're going from the first term to the 100th term, you're only adding 599 times. So that's why you end up with that. Okay, now I can officially stop.